Starship Troopers Terran Command. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words of the words of the developer. Starship Troopers Terran Command is a thrilling real-time strategy game set in the Starship Troopers movies universe. Take command of the mobile infantry and do your part in the war against the arachnid threat. Ensure that human civilization, not insect, dominates the galaxy now and always. Yes, guys, this is Starship Troopers. I've been looking forward to this ever since I played the demo a few months ago. Oh, I can't even remember when it was. It was a while ago, I know that. Uh, I've been really looking forward to getting me mitts on this one. It's not the full game, this. Um, it's half of the campaign. The campaign, I believe, is 20 missions long, and I was given the first 10. Um, a lot of the juicy stuff's in the second half of the campaign, like the mechs and things. So that's why this is kind of like a review in progress i'll be uh, given access to the rest of it on release on the 16th of june but i'm going to give you my impressions so far halfway through the campaign the good and the bad so first of all let's start on the on the good on the positive notes they've improved on some of the things that i didn't like uh, and a lot of people didn't like in the actual demo the attack move is way better with the way the formations kind of work um, it's really, really neat the way you can send your, your troops through. Your rocket troops will, uh, or mortar troops will automatically hang behind your uh, infantry troops. So it makes it so much easier to equip everybody in the, in the, into the right positions on the battlefield. And it's important that you do because things happen so fast out there. Half the time you don't get a chance to react. It's just crazy time when, when the arachnids are going mental. Another thing that they've fixed is the engineers, they're a three-man team and they could block an entire uh, group of machine gunners, assault rifle people, uh, from firing because you can't fire through people in this. Well, they've fixed that. Uh, now it's only squads, full squads that can block other squads. Uh, so you can stand some, like a couple of people in front uh, of, of a squad and, and they'll be able to fire through them like they would be able to in real life. So that's a huge fix for me. Uh, I really... I didn't like that in the in the actual demo and the fix that so that's all good the missions themselves um obviously it's a, a bit of a tutorial at the beginning uh you do get to fight the mission the first mission that's in the actual movies as well which is really cool i'm not going to show you any of that because i don't want to kind of spoil it but the the way they've structured the missions in the game some of them are underground most of them are on the surface fighting bug nests and having to hold out at forts really good stuff really good stuff well thought out a lot of them uh, with some nice objectives that just seem a little bit out of reach and you've got to really go into the danger zone to get them and a lot of the time you're, you're fighting for your life it is a quite a difficult game but it's you, you've got to up the difficulty a bit to kind of get it into that realism mode you know when i say realism mode you know uh, in the the way that the, the movies are but it's all bottom squelching stuff you, you're shitting yourself a lot of the time when you're out there especially if you're taking a lot of casualties uh, if they're starting to get through your defense if you're trying to hold off more than one side at a time and you're constantly moving troops to kind of reinforce and calling in reinforcements if you've got the chance it's it's brilliant stuff really enjoyed it it's not like a an, a normal rts game where you build a base and pump out the units and this you can, this is more of a tactical real-time game uh, you don't get to pump out shit tons of units you don't get to build buildings you can, there is rudimentary base building if you like you can build two or three buildings that give you access to certain higher tiered troops but if you don't have the supply points you can't get them anyway and supply points are very rare in this game so a lot of the time you'll be out trying to keep alive four or five or sometimes up to six squads and you've got to put them in the right positions take care of them they level up they get more expertise until they become elite and then they get a little few powers that you can use uh when they when they become elite there's different classes as well in in the first 10 hours uh, sorry 10 missions you get snipers rockets mortars machine guns uh, and things like that so there's a lot to kind of play with uh, on the map now the way the whole game works with the arachnids is they'll have hives nests if you like underground and there'll be uh, icons of bugs on that actual nest and if they are red that means there's still bugs in the nest so you don't want to be sending troops in there to blow it or they'll just get wrecked so you have to kind of lure the bugs out now to do that you have to go close to the nest the closer you get to the nest the more inclined the bugs are to come out and attack you but it gets harder there's also 
bug holes connected to the nest which will also spawn there's a red line moves up from left to right when that line hits the the right hand side a swarm will come out so you have to make sure that you're not in the vicinity of a bug hole when it, when they're coming out and the way that the maps are designed sometimes you have to go past a bug hole to get to the hive that's supplying that bug hole because you can't take out a bug hole you've got to take out the hive so it, 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 it's a really cool mechanic because it puts you in danger. You've got to think about how you're going to do this. And another thing, if another swarm comes from another part of the map, because there'll be bug holes all over the map, while you're trying to blow a nest, if you send guys in and some more arachnids come around the corner, that's it. They'll run in the hole and kill your men. So you have to be careful. It's, it's kind of like surgery taken out of a, uh, certainly in the later missions it is, in the early missions they're all kind of easy, but in the later missions it's like performing a surgery, you've got to think about it tactically, you've got to make sure you're covering your guys as they're going in to blow these things, or, they, or you're going to be in deep shit, and the way the game is, you can't really afford to lose too many uh, troops, if you take a bit of a battering and, and some of your troops is down, to, in, down in numbers, you might have a squad of eight, down to maybe there's only three left. What you can do is get them to one of your radio bases, or if you've got a, a portable radio operator, you can call in reinforcements, and you do get a, a, a never-ending supply of reinforcements, which might sound a bit easy, but it's not, because you've got to get them there to start with. And also, while they're reinforced and they're out of action, and because you only have a small amount of squads, one squad out of action can be devastating. You, you need every bullet you can get. It's, it's just crazy. There are things that I don't like, uh, which I'll, I'll go into now. Um, the sounds better but it's still not amazing um they have added some screaming and yelling and, and bug noises and stuff um it just still feels that little bit kind of lifeless at times not all the time also as well on the sound uh, sometimes you'll get echoes when they really shouldn't be it's great in the caves you get a nice echo but sometimes just walking down a valley you get a like a cave echo which is a bit odd but the biggest problem i've got with the game is the hand holding very disappointed that they've opted for this hand holding method you've got this guy who's your ceo and uh he kind of tells you what to do i mean you get your, your briefing at the beginning of the mission which is fine you need that and then it should just leave you but it doesn't this this ceo i wish he just shut the f up he's constantly saying oh by the way if you get men over there and you get another man over there that's that, that's a great place to ambush it's like shut up mate i want to do that myself that's my job, isn't it, as the, as the player? It's, these are my troops. I tell them where to f***ing go, not you. I want to do that. I was coming along this like a ravine, and I noticed that there was it narrowed a really good bottleneck, and at the, either sides of the narrow, there was cliffs where I could p place me men. And there was barrels in this area. It was kind of telegraphed that there was something bad going to happen here. And I just instinctively thought, right, get to the high ground, lads. I'll have my snipers up there, my rocket troops up there. And I was, and I thought, I'll just send one squad along there to trigger the enemy because I could tell that there were going to be a, there was going to be an ambush. But I was ambushing the ambushy. But as I sent me guy along, a cutscene came along for me. See, oh yeah, oh this is a great place for an ambush. You should put troops up there. Oh, we've got fucking troops up there, mate. What are you doing? Can you hear that? Bugs are coming. Set up an ambush on the high ground. Hold fire until the bugs are square in the kill zone. And then all of a sudden, the arachnids come marching along, and I'm sitting there ambushing them, and it just felt all awful. It was, it was a situation that could have felt great if I'd just been left to do it myself. We're not stupid. You know, well, some gamers are. But, you know, it's like, let us play the damn games. I mean, it doesn't happen all the time. But these things happen certainly three or four times as I'm playing. And it just served to piss me off and break immersion, really. And I just wish developers would realise that gamers aren't fucking morons. We can work shit out, you know? Just let us do it. Give us an objective, right? Take your troops over there. That's what you've got to do. How you do that's entirely up to you. If you all go out there and you just act like pricks and get slaughtered, well, tough. It's not the end of the world. We can restart it, you know? We don't die IRL. Let us learn by our mistakes. That, that's all I'm saying. It could also do with a couple of quality of life issues. Uh, my main one being snipers. Uh, they, they, they shoot way further than everybody else, hence the uh, name Sniper. And uh, they're great for taking out their, the arachnids long range spitters, but you have to manually tell them to do that. It would be much nicer to just have a little toggle saying only engage 
arachnid spitters and that would save you the micro that you have to do uh, in pretty much every battle. Overall though, the game's great. I really enjoy it. I can't wait to play the next 10 missions. I, I wish it had skirmish. Not bothered about multiplayer at all in a game like this, but I would love to have had AI skirmish with procedurally generated maps. Um, but it, it's such a cheap game. It's only like £23, I think, uh, which for a game like this, that's as well thought out as this, is pretty much a steal so far. I'm, I'm given it's 7 out of 10 for the first half of the campaign. Uh, we'll see where that goes. Probably up from there, unless they make a complete dog's dinner of the second half. But uh, thoroughly enjoyed my time playing it. But there you go, guys. That's Starship Troopers Terran Command. So far, so good. Can't wait for the second half.